In this video, we're sorting out the content of Tractored, where it comes from and how to get rid of it, but also how to totally prevent it getting there in the first place. Hello and welcome to another video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. This video will be about track cleaning. Yes. This has been a request since uh, more than a year from uh, many of, uh, of the viewers of the channel. And track cleaning is an issue for most people who are uh, dealing with model railroad both on professional basis and on hobby basis. I've been taking my time to uh, evaluate a number of different ways to do the track cleaning. Uh, and uh, also been looking into what is the dirt about really. Now, before getting started on track cleaning and materials and methods, how to do this, I would like to say that the number one prevention method in order to avoid track cleaning is to run trains. Yes. If you run the trains like once per week, you will never ever need to clean your tracks. That's a fact. Another very good prevention method in order to avoid track cleaning is to make sure that everything in your landscape and the ballast is properly fixed. Most of the manufacturer has a, a sprayer like this. This one's from, from Noch. And with this sprayer, uh, you can spray glue over the landscape material. I typically do like this. I mix one part PVA glue, that's uh, equal to Elmer construction, with uh, four parts of water. Add five drops of dishwash cleaner into it and mix for a minute. Pour this mix into a sprayer and spray until everything is properly fixed. When dry, vacuum the layout. A forum friend of mine is uh, working on this uh, material lab. So his job is really to make analysis of, of uh, different material and, and what they consist from. So what he did was he actually he uh, removed some of the dirt along uh, the railway lines from his uh, model railroad and took it back to the lab, making an analyze of what is really the dirt about. And uh, the, the analysis show that uh, it was like 80% uh, was uh, uh, organic and non-organic fibers, meaning uh, uh, stuff coming from clothes, hair, well, the things you find normally in dust when you vacuum your house. And the rest was lubricant. Lubricant, lubricant coming from the trains. Uh, because everything that is moving and has a motor needs some kind of lubricant. One easy thing you can do uh, to avoid too much lubricant on your rails is to uh, avoid lubricating like this. Instead, I'm uh, typically removing the, the wheel sets out of the, the cars uh, and dip the, the end, end in a, an, a small pool of oil and we're done. This way you get a lubricant where you should have it, but not an excess amount that lands on the track. But how to prevent dust? I mean, if you have your layout in a, like a living room or in a bedroom, then, then you will have a, 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 a kind of significant problems with dust in the air. Uh, and then you cannot do much about it uh, really, uh, but to remove the air, uh, dust from, from the rails once it landed. Uh, whilst if you have it in a more uh, uh, remote room or uh, isolated room like, like my garage here, then you can put filters on the air intakes uh, so you avoid getting uh, things from trees and, and from the air, from the outside air in. That way you, you avoid a lot of the dust. Then you always get the dust fibers from, from clothes and stuff uh, that cannot be avoided. So uh, when that lands on the track, it has to be removed. A third potential problem is corrosion. Uh, meaning oxidation of the metal in the track. Uh, this has to do a lot with uh, both what materials your manufacturer has used when they made the rails. There are everything uh, which spans from stainless steel, which is a very good material, uh, to uh, less corrosion resistant iron based materials to brass. Uh, so uh, you will have uh, always a potential problem with oxidation. 
pipes. I have air intakes here in my garage. And I can see uh, during uh, humid periods that I get oxidation of the rails just underneath those air intakes. I would recommend you to buy a dehumidifier in, where you have your layout. Uh, it can be run 24 hours to keep the humidity down. That will probably help you a lot. They do not have to be very expensive either. Uh, I have bought one which I run during the, the spring here and uh, it didn't cost much so it's a good thing. And that leads us into the actual theme for this uh, video which is track cleaning. I mean every model railroader's dream is just to put the car on your, on your layout and it goes around and, and cleans the track and, and you, you have got rid of the problem. But uh, up till now I, I have not found any product on the market that really does that. Uh, and uh, I've set a, a kind of a limit to five passes. So if I have a, a, a piece of dirt which stops my train somewhere, I, I want by pulling this car or pushing the car over this, uh, p this part five times maximum, then the dirt should be gone. And up till now I have found no car on the market who does this. So what type of cars have I been trying? Well, I've been trying a, a car from Morocco, which has a, a kind of rubber underneath. Uh, it works well, it does not uh, meet the criteria of five passes to remove any dirt. But I feel that it does a good job uh, uh, preventing. So once the, when, when I get the, clean, the tracks clean, it prevents from having more stops. So, prevention device. I've also tried out uh, a, a car from Merklin. Uh, it has a similar kind of setup, but it has a, a pillow underneath of some felt type material. It works fine too. It does the same thing. It does not clean the tracks. It's just a, a preventer of, of uh, getting more stops. I've also been trying out this expensive set from Lux. Uh, it contains from, uh, from two cars uh, typically. It's a vacuum cleaner car and a, a, a track polisher car. It's a very noisy set, so I, I wouldn't typically have that running while I'm you know, enjoying my <laughs> trains. <laughs> because it's more noisy than any of the other trains. Uh, so uh, this one I kind of I put put it on and, and run it when I'm up uh, doing the dishes or something like that. Um, but um, it does not clean the tracks either. Uh, I've been trying on, on 10 different uh, places on my layout to run it over uh, a, a clear stop for trains and um, it does not remove the, the, the dirt. It is a preventer, again a preventer, but for me a, 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 a preventer of, of dust should be able to run at all times when you're operating the layout. And a, a so noisy train, I, 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 it does not qualify under that. The vacuum car is very good though, because it really sucks up dust and hair and stuff like that, which is on the rail which can be a very tricky thing to do manually inside tunnels and uh, shadow stations. So the vacuum car uh, I would give credit, but the polisher not. And that, my friends, takes us back to the manual track cleaning. Yeah, I know you didn't want to hear this, <laughs> but it's a fact. I've been trying out different types of, of manual track cleaning uh, devices. Uh, easiest one is uh, a piece of uh, wooden a piece of wood, just push it around and it's, it's very efficient. How about abrasive methods like sanding paper, uh, 400 or 800 grit paper, just to get rid of all those dirt stops? No, don't do that ever, because what happens is that you scratch or alter the, the surface of your, of your rail, or your tracks, and, and after that the buildup of, of oxidation or, or, and uh, dirt will increase. So, you know, initially it's very efficient of course, but over the long run it's, it's definitely a loser. Don't do that, not even initially, once you have completed your landscape. Another uh, product which is commonly used for track cleaning, but which I would like to sort under abrasive is this type of rubber, uh, uh, hybrid rubber block. 
it's, a, it's a block of rubber with the metal particles inside. This one's from Rocco, the Austrian manufacturer. Uh, and this block is actually pretty good to remove dirt stops uh, on the track. And it's, I have to admit, I use it uh, from time to time to do that. Uh, I've tried other similar uh, rubber blocks, uh, I don't know what you call it, Clop copies or clones, I don't know who launched this first into the market. But what you should be on the lookout for is to avoid soft blocks, which leaves a lot of uh, metal and rubber particles in, in the tracks when you use it. So this one from Rocco is pretty hard and it doesn't leave all that much behind and therefore I think it's, it's efficient and, and, and do not create more problems for you than, than it actually solves. So it works fine, I use it from time to time and I have a good experience with that. How about using cleaning liquids or cleaning agents to clean the tracks? Well, first off, I would like to divide these um, cleaning agents into two groups. The first group is just a solvent, like isopropanol, ethanol, uh, gasoline, uh, pure, and uh, uh, acetone. Uh, the other group is cleaning agents, which also consist from portion of oil. All right, let's start with the solvent. First off, acetone. Never ever use acetone on, uh, for track cleaning because the acetone is very aggressive to plastic so it will efficiently destroy your tracks. So never do that. Uh, a better choice is uh, either ethanol or isopropanol and I typically use this only initially when I prepare the landscape to remove like paint or glue from the tracks. So I don't use isopropanol or the other uh, cleaning agents as a daily type of cleaning because I have a negative experience with that. Uh, so that's my advice. Use it initially but leave it uh, for, for, for the rest. The other <laughs> group which contains also a portion of oil this group uh, is like um, contains the Inox uh, MX3, uh, the VD40, CTC556, etc., etc. Has two major drawbacks, which you know leaves you with a result between bad and catastrophic. Um, one of the drawback is uh, reduced traction, because what you do, even though if you wipe the tracks with a, a, a dry cloth afterwards, uh, there will be a film of oil on top of the tracks. And this will efficiently reduce the traction power uh, of your engines. If you have a flat layout uh, without any grades, <laughs> you will probably not notice this. But on the standard European layout with a lot of grades and ups and downs, it's a disaster. So don't do that. And the second reason not to use um, cleaning agents with oil in it is that um, the oil attracts dust. Uh, even if it's just a super thin film, it will attract like static grass, turf and dust from air and eventually put an end to <laughs> all movements on your layout. Uh, so you know, I, I, I will not recommend that. I know that there are some guys out there. Uh, I saw this uh, Inox uh, MX3 cleaner was uh, promoted by uh, an Australian guy. Uh, he's been using it and I bought this bottle a year ago and tried it out. And <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I cannot recommend it. It's, uh, it's, it was a disaster. And the same with the VD40. I read a long article about uh, the chemical benefits of, of using this uh, to prevent arcing on the rails, etc. But okay, well, it might be true. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a chemist, uh, but I've tried VD40 and it does not work for me. So that's about cleaning liquids. All right, so I would say that the, the two main takeaways here, which I want to deliver to you, is that uh, the best way to prevent track cleaning in the first place is to run your trains regularly, at least once per week and at least one hour. And 
a wooden block will take you almost all the way through all the track cleaning uh, without any complicated uh, <laughs> and expensive equipment at all. Just a wooden block and it does not leave any uh, thing behind it. It just cleans the track. Did you know that this channel is totally dependent on to the patrons are supporting it? Uh, if you want to be part of this community, uh, please get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from like one dollar per month, uh, or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe. Enable that little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see you.